Hey everyone, this is Ian O'Byrne. Welcome to Module 1, uh, the first video in my web literacy series of videos. Uh, in this first video, we're going to take a look at how we can authentically and effectively embed technology into teaching. Uh, and this is a way for us to start thinking about teaching, learning, and tech. Uh, in terms of the tweetable summary, in this first module, we're going to talk about literacy and technology and how uh, we are uh, reimagining teaching and learning and this reimagining requires that we take a look at uh, pedagogies that we've used throughout time to think about teaching and learning uh, and then what changes as we integrate technology I don't think that we can just continue to do things the way that we've always done them in the past uh, as we get started, I think that it's important to note that we live in incredible times. We live in times where we have the opportunity to change, uh, you know, the way that we teach. We have the opportunity to change students' lives, uh, and all of this is through the influx of technology and how we address these changes in our classroom. When we think about changes that are occurring to our classroom, uh, many times I think about this from my background as a, a literacy researcher and I think about reading. I think that the internet is the dominant text of our generation and as such there's three basic ways that I think about uh, text and think about reading. So if we think about the internet, I think that one of the changes or one of the challenges that we have is that we have fundamental changes that are occurring to the reader. So when we look at uh, you know, current readers. Uh, this is the bag of one of my colleagues, uh, Suzanne Murphy, and she would carry around magazines and iPads and Kindles and track phones, you know, and so the reader itself is trying to negotiate all of these different forms of text. Uh, and this is a challenge many times when we think about our own practices because we think about those of us that need to, you know, see a book or open a book and feel the pages. And, you know, I talk to educators that say that they need to smell a book in order to be able to read it. Um, these are things that we need to try and figure out how we address these changes in our own practice. We also see fundamental changes that are occurring to text over time. So if we think back to initial students that we had previously, they would, you know, come into school with their cuneiform tablets stacked up in their backpacks. Uh, and then we would gradually progress and we would, you know, with the invention of the uh, Gutenberg Press, we were able to recreate text and recreate manuscripts. And then over time, we were able to mass produce these manuscripts and share those out with others. Uh, we progress, and I can see the evolution and the dissemination of information through libraries. I remember growing up and how incredible it was to be able to go to the library and read anything about uh, anyone or any time or any place. And now, in the bottom right corner of this slide, we really think about how far we've come where we carry these devices around that have ubiquitous access to information where we can basically go online and we can learn about anything anytime any place um, we don't have to go to one specific location anymore we don't have to go to a building you know go to the library in order to learn we can basically pull the device out of our pocket or let you know lay a device on our laps and we can learn and we can interact and we connect with other people uh, globally and learn pretty much anything that we want to. There's also fundamental changes that are occurring to the activity. So once again, if I think about technology and I think about the use of the internet, I approach it from a literacy perspective. I think this is all about reading and writing and participating. So if I think about the activity of reading, we, we look at the ways in which individuals engage you know, and learn online. So if we think about a student that starts off and they are reading online, what they might do is if we ask them to search for the scarlet letter, they might go in after a quick Google search, go to Wikipedia, find out some more information, head on over to dictionary.com to look up the term scarlet. They might head over to Sparknotes to basically get the behind the scenes notes so that they don't have to actually read it. They could go see primary source documents. They can go online to Internet Movie Database. They can go to do a Google image search. But they basically can bounce around between numerous sites to gather information. And they're basically 
picking and pulling and teasing out information as they search online. One thing to keep in mind is that individuals are bouncing across these sites and they're basically spending about one to two seconds at a site to initially figure out if they really want to spend time figuring out what that site has to tell them uh, and, and can it answer information about their, you know, about their inquiry. So a student will go into a web page and they'll do a quick F pattern with their eyes. They'll drag across the top of the page with their eyes, dip down, look here where the links are, and then trail down. Um, and within one to two seconds at the most, individuals are creating that F pattern with, with their eyes and trying to figure out do they want to spend more time reading that page. So there's fundamental changes that are occurring to the activity of reading and the activity of research. And what we need to think about is, as educators, how do we scaffold students in this experience? In pre-K on up through higher ed, how do we scaffold them as they research and read and gather information online? So there are fundamental changes that are occurring. And one of the exciting things to me is, as individuals, we are trying to figure out how we deal with these situations and how we address these changes in, in our own teaching uh, practices when we're trying to figure out how to do deal with them in our own personal lives. You know, we're trying to figure out, can I use an e-reader? Do I have to see and smell a book in order to be able to read and understand it? Um, you know, how, how do I engage online with other people? So it's something that we're trying to deal with in our own personal lives. But at the same time, if we educate, we have to figure out how do I integrate these technologies into my classroom to support students. To make sense of this, one of the things that I go back to and I use repeatedly in my work is the web literacy map. I've spent a little bit of time working uh, in, the, in the community with Mozilla to help define uh, the web literacy map. This is version 1.1. Uh, the initial version uh, referred to three different areas. We looked at exploring, building, and connecting. Um, this has, over time, uh, been revised, and the, the latest version of this looks at... They renamed the three basic uh, tenets. So we look at uh, reading is, is exploring, and then we have writing, which was the building piece, and then participating was originally called connecting. Um, but basically, it's the same idea behind uh, the skills that we want students to or in individuals to get to use as they work online. So we're looking at really participating, reading, and writing. The earlier terminology that we used was connecting, exploring, and building. And in a lot of my work and in, in some of the publications that I've had in the past, the way that I discuss this is uh, in, in previous models that I've been working on with colleagues and individually is I look at online collaborative inquiry, which is the participation side, uh, online reading comprehension, which is the reading side, and then online content construction, which is the writing side. So this is what we will come back to again and again and again when we think about technology integration. And I make the case that as many of these things uh, change over time, and no matter how they change, if we can come back and say that you or you or your students are reading, writing, and or participating online, then you can say that you are authentically and effectively integrating technology into instruction. So I basically boil it down to reading, writing, participating. If you can identify opportunities where you do one, two, or all three of those. I don't think you need to do all three, but if you can say that you're doing that, I think that you can say that you are effectively integrating technology into your classroom. You are authentically integrating tech. Um, and once again, this is something that we will uh, break down throughout this uh, series of videos and the, the resources that I have available online, but this is an overview to get us to think about where we're headed uh, in this course. In terms of participation, we identify it as a group of local or global learners who arrive at a common outcome via multiple pathways of knowledge. And what we're really thinking about is individuals, either locally or globally, researching together online, collaborating, co-constructing information. As an example of this, you could have students within one class reading together 
and editing a Google Doc or a wiki page to research online and pull their information into one page. You could also see this occurring globally as you have individuals integrating uh, you know, information into wiki spaces and a wiki space page. You could see people together online working through a MOOC and learning together online and collaborating and co-constructing information. But participating in that, the ways in which we socialize online, to me, is a fundamental integral component of how students you know, and individuals show that they are web literate. They basically get there online and they participate and socialize with others. The second area that I focus on is reading. This was the exploring part of the web literacy model as we initially saw. It. Um, this uh, integrates into online reading comprehension and some of the work that I helped that uh, helped develop when I was a member of the New Literacies Research Lab. Online reading comprehension and reading online, I, I identify and define as questioning, locating, evaluating, synthesizing, and communicating information during online problem-based reading tasks. So for the most part, when we read online right now, a lot of it's inquiry-based learning. We are there to solve or answer or find information to help us solve or, or answer a problem. Uh, most of it's in, you know, information-seeking behaviors. And within those behaviors, as we read, on, uh, read online, what we look at is these five skills. And, and to me, the you know, the, the first four are terribly important. Communicating is important, but not as important now that we pulled in uh, writing and online content construction at the end. But we'll talk about that in a second. So questioning really is, can you question uh, information? Can you look for information online? Can you identify and use keywords to find information? Can you change your keywords over time? Uh, locating is locating search engine results or within search engine results. Can you locate information on a page? Evaluation is terribly important. Evaluation is critical evaluation of online information. Can you judge? Can you evaluate the credibility and or relevance of information as you read online? And synthesis really is something that is, is also very important. And I think it's something that we don't address far enough uh, it, and that's basically synthesizing across information sources. So not only are we synthesizing across two information sources or two web pages, but what happens when we synthesize across uh, online and offline information sources? So what happens when I read the newspaper and I go to a blog post? What happens when I go read a book and then I look at uh, another blog post or a wiki uh, page? What happens when I synthesize across modes? What happens you know, when I watch a YouTube video, like the video that you're watching now, and then I go read a blog post? How does that change over time? How do I synthesize across those over time? Um, and so what we're looking at is these skills as students read online and, and how do we support their learning online and make sure that they are successful. Um, in terms of reading, we know that reading as a task um, is something that we use across multiple spaces. So it's not uncommon now for, you know, as we engage online and as we read online, it's not uncommon for us to have multiple devices out. It's not uncommon for some readers to have, you know, text handwritten notes out to keep track of what they're reading. It's not uncommon for people to take online materials and print them out so that they can highlight and mark up and annotate them in an offline space. Um, it's not uncommon for people to take screenshots, you know, or take uh, screenshots or photos of offline materials and put them into a digital space. So we see a, a, a blending of multiple spaces and multiple texts as we still make sense of what reading really is. And so this is one of the challenges as we try to make sense of it and also as we try to support students as they engage in these spaces and learn across these spaces. The last area uh, in the web literacy model and the last area that we'll focus on across these videos and across this class is writing. Uh, once again, this is building in the earlier model or in some of my earlier work, I define this as online content construction. So in writing and online content construction, what we're looking at is 
the, the construction, the recreation, the remixing of online texts by encoding and decoding meaning through the use of multimodal design tools. Now that sounds like a mouthful, but what we're really talking about is the, the creative side, the writing side, the composition side of digital media. So what we're talking about is you know, having students, individuals, express themselves creatively through digital means and through digital technologies. Now we have tremendous opportunities as we think about remix and mashup culture. So we think about writing using digital tools. What this could look like is it could be video editing. It could be coding. It could be programming. It could be stop motion animation. It could be creating a blog post or creating an entire website. It could be editing a wiki page. There's numerous opportunities, some that we haven't even seen yet, to think about how we quote unquote write and how do we create in online spaces. And what we need is to figure out opportunities to allow our students know that they have the ability to, they have the power to write and create and construct digital content. So this is the third area that we're going to spend a lot of time unpacking and identifying ways that we can integrate this into our classroom. So once again, when we think about integrating technology into teaching, when we think about teaching, learning, and tech, we're going to focus on the three core areas of web literacy and figure out how can we integrate one, two, or maybe three of these areas into our classroom. And slowly we'll unpack what does it really mean to participate online, what does it mean to write or read as we read online, what does it mean to evaluate. And keep in mind that we might spend you know days or weeks or an entire year with students, with learners, or in our own practices, working on one area. So we could spend you know, an entire year of our class thinking about just coding, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but the, what we need to do as educators is identify which of these areas we wanna focus on, when do we wanna focus on it with students, and then how do we integrate this into our classroom. One of the key questions that we'll have throughout this is how am I going to specifically integrate technology into my work, but then also how will I ultimately integrate technology into the classroom? Um, and, and there's multiple models to think about this. There's multiple ways to think about this. One of the key things that's important for me uh, as your guide is to think about ways in which we can enhance uh, what we're currently doing or transform what we're currently doing through the use of technology. I don't think that the use of technology by itself makes teaching and learning better. I don't think that students or you know people that you collaborate with will automatically resonate with what you're doing just because you integrate technology. So I think that we can either you know first look at ways to substitute or, or enhance or augment what we're doing through the use of technology. But I think that there's really opportunities to transform and change, uh, hopefully for the better, what we're doing in our classroom and in our lives through the use of technology. But it takes a lot of thought. It takes a lot of effort to move up this scale. So we'll come back to this model uh, several times throughout our courses. I also believe in the technology learning cycle. And some of the key components with this basically revolves around that I think that you should start with something that you like to do. Start with something that you like to teach, a unit that you like to teach, an area that you like to focus on. That way, if there's ever a chance where the technology might fail or falter, you have a backup plan. That's terribly important because things will go wrong. Once you identify something that you like to teach and like to focus on, find one small way that you can integrate technology. Find one achievable goal. A lot of colleagues of mine talk about MVP, the minimum viable product. And I think it's important here, think about one small starting point that you know that you can be successful and integrate technology into it, test it out, try it with students, try it in your own work, and then figure out what works and doesn't work. And by all means, as you work through this progress, uh, process, share over time, reflect over time. You know, have a blog, write about this, share with other people so that you can get feedback and you can guide other people. I think that, um, you know, one of the other models that we will also focus on is the SAMR model. 
uh, and this, you know, these different models or these mindsets we will come back to repeatedly throughout the, the videos and, and the course. But the SAMR model looks at enhancing and transforming what's happening in our classroom. You know, as stated before, we can substitute, we can augment. Um, but what we're really looking for is we're looking for an opportunity to dig deeper and to redefine what's happening in our classroom and transform possibilities for our students. One of the last models that we will use as we make sense of teaching and learning with technology is the TPAC model. So we'll think about uh, technology, we'll think about pedagogical knowledge, we'll think about pedagogical content area knowledge, and a lot of this might seem, uh, you know, uh, like it's ununderstandable. Uh, a lot of this might seem uh, not easy to understand. But what I think is it gives us an opportunity to think about ways in which we can integrate technology and give ourselves credit for what we already know how to do. So with the TPAC model, one of the things that I like in there is that we give ourselves credit for our mastery and understanding of our content area knowledge. So if you are a science teacher, you already know your science area uh, and the content knowledge. It, and you also know the pedagogical content knowledge. You know, you know your science content area knowledge, but you also know how to teach science content area knowledge. And that's, to me, empowering. Because then what we look at through the TPAC model is the only other thing that you really need to figure out is how do I integrate technology into all that? But we'll continue to unpack this in the upcoming videos, and I'll find better ways to say ununderstandable or whatever word I said before. Um, so as we're wrapping up, this is a, a series of videos and, and a class in which we'll make sense of the web literacy map and think about teaching and learning and technology and figure out better ways to integrate it into our classrooms. These materials are appropriate for educators in pre-K up through 12, and they're definitely appropriate for educators and instructors in higher ed. I think all of us need to find better opportunities to integrate technology into our classroom and support students and support learners. We'll focus on participating, we'll focus on reading and writing, using and in digital spaces, and it's an opportunity to think about meaningful, authentic, effective ways to integrate technology into what we're currently doing. So with that being said, thank you for paying attention. I'll see you in module two.